screen and that will include the words and uh, I just hope you can relax and enjoy this morning. Christmas has always been a time for mixed emotions for many, many of us. And so this morning we want to stand together and recognise that we can be in unity and in solidarity with those for who Christmas Day is no different from many others. Maybe due to the chaos of war or conflict, or the sadness of illness, or the despair of loss. And this year, many of us are missing people and are sad that our plans have changed. And so we want to stand together and be together in the way that we can this, this, this year. So let's open with a prayer. Loving Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son, whose birth at Bethlehem we now celebrate. Make our hearts and our homes always open to him, that he may dwell with us forever, and we may serve him gladly all our days to the honour and glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand for um, a carol. We can't sing here in church, but we can certainly echo the words in our hearts. And those of you at home can have a big sing along. So let's stand up for our first time. Long 
This Christmas might feel strangely different. But it's still a timeless truth for everyone across the world, whether far away or close to home. There'll be new memories to make and old memories to tell laughter to share with family, friends or neighbours. 
Little ones, big ones, even furry ones. <laughs> There'll be presents we give and blessings we share. <laughs> Generous tables, crackers to pull, and empty places for those not with us. Some who are gone forever, and some who are just not able to travel. We'll have eyes filled with tears and hearts with love, whether there'll be arms around us or chats around screens, giggles on phones. <laughs> We'll still have trees to set up and cards to write. Calendars to open and carols to sing. Candles to light, prayers to say. And the greatest story of all, with light from the stable and the Christ child promising. Comfort and joy for everyone. This special Christmas time.
census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinus was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem to the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the Lord said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. Alex shared Psalm 139 with us. And often Christmas is a time of making ready, of preparing, and that's what the conversation often is before Christmas. Are you ready? And yet the um, image of Jesus in the manger is not about us making ourselves ready, but about God being with us, whatever our hearts are like and however we're feeling. As I want to use Psalm 139 in our time of prayer this morning. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. Father, help us to know that you are present and that you are with us however we are feeling. And if we are feeling the depths of sadness or loneliness, we do not need to be afraid, for you are here with us. If I rise on the wheels of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. Jesus, we pray for those who are far away from us this Christmas. Those who we do not know, but who are struggling. Those who are hungry. Those who are homeless. And those who we know and who we love, but we cannot be with. We pray for them. For your comfort and for your joy. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the night will come night around me, but even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, but darkness is of light to you. Father, thank you that you are the light in the darkness. And I pray that we will have hope in you. It's Christmas and this year.
Oh, hello, and uh, do take a seat. Uh, I just got a uh, notice in the back, we forgot to light the big candle in the middle, Jesus was born. Uh, we had midnight mass last night and we had the white candle lit, so it's going to be lit again. Uh, look, there it is. Brilliant. Thank you, Ellie. I was going to say a few words, and, and then uh, we have a few more carols, but during these carols that come after my sermon, you can uh, just remain seated and just enjoy listening to them. And for those of you at home, you can just sing it out, spell it out, as it already was recommended. Um, a, a few things on the second Bible reading, which Sophie read out, and that is about the angels speaking to the shepherds. And I'm going to uh, pick out a few words, which I think are really relevant for us today. First thing I want to pick out is that the angel said, do not be afraid. And in the tradition translation it says, fear not, behold. And I think those two words are really key. And the word behold feels sometimes old-fashioned, and the modern translations of the Bible, they don't have the word behold in there. And actually I want to kind of take it back in for this particular talk today. But the first thing is, fear not. Um, I don't know about you, but there's a lot of fear going around in the South East, in England in general, and across the world. The very reason that uh, France did close its borders and many other countries was out of fear that the virus would not spread or a new strand of the virus into their countries. Uh, it might be politically loaded as well, but it is true that many countries were recommended by the WHO to close their border with the UK. Now here, in Britain, where we live, we are either afraid to get the virus or afraid to pass it on. So for that reason, we keep ourselves and one another safe because we don't want others to be impacted by the virus as well because it's really unknown how much it kind of affects people. So fear is a real part of human life. Even though great warriors in recent times would say the only fear you need to fear is fear itself, that's easily said than done. When the shepherds were there together, what happens is great fear struck them when an angel came. Now, it was not just fear of the unknown, of the supernatural, of the extraordinary thing. That indeed would strike people with fear as well. But I think there was something deeper at work going on. When in the Bible an angel or a messenger from God, because another word for angel, it comes from the Greek word angelos, it means messenger. And when a messenger from God comes from this holy place where God is residing in heaven, there you see the encounters that people are trembling with great fear. It's fear of coming in the presence of uh, something that is so pure and so holy that we feel somehow ashamed to be there. And that dates back from the early messages in the Bible, where we see in Genesis 3, in the story of the God and the God of Eve, when they sinned, when they chose their own terms, what is good and evil, that fear struck them and God the pierced. They were afraid, they were ashamed, they hid themselves, and they hid their bodies. There was something about the pureness and the holiness of God, the pureness of the angels, that strikes in fear, and it's more than just the fear of the unknown. And I think that is really important for us to know, because we are afraid. We are afraid of failure. We are afraid of not doing the right thing. We are, uh, we are sometimes afraid, afraid to, to do uh, the way we are asked to do and to the way to present ourselves. But if we were completely loved, if you and I were utterly loved by God and completely accepted for who we are, would you be afraid? I think you would not care much what other people would think if you feel so loved and assured by the Creator of the world who gives you an assurance that is far more than any other person on earth could give you. And the angel is saying to the shepherds, fear not. He's precisely saying, do not be afraid. 
for I bring you good news. So this messenger is a good news messenger. That's where we get the word evangelos from. Evangelism. That is means good news bringer. So he brings good news. And, uh, and he says the word, behold. And that actually is kind of a good translation from the original Greek. It's kind of, do not fear. Take, to, 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 to take a moment to really hold this. I'm going to give you some extraordinary messages. So they have to also reflect, stand back. This is going to be some amazing news. For you today is born in Bethlehem a Savior. And then, what is the good news? Well, the good news is that Jesus saves, and he saves us not just from bad things, from a pandemic, from um, diseases, from war. No, he saves us from ourselves. So that what is inside us, this fear, this fear of rejection, this fear of failing, he's going to save us from it. But not just that, it's the fear of the selfishness, of the sinfulness, of the nature that is within us, that although desires to do good, does bad. And so what happens is that the angel is telling this, that the Savior is born, and then what is the good news? Now the very good news is not just there for one angel to share. A whole host is going to join in. And it's at the end of what the angels are saying, and they're saying this. Suddenly a great company of heaven, heavenly hosts appear, with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favour rests. On earth, peace to those. Now, that is sometimes translated in peace to those who only believe in God, which is not true. Peace to those from everyone, that is perhaps not also true. It's quite hard to translate that in a way that makes real sense. Because both, there is an emphasis of truth in there. But it is peace to those. Why is there peace needed? Because there is a war. There is a conflict. And that's where the peace in this context is really relevant. There's a conflict between humanity and God. And I mentioned, I alluded to that earlier on, is that humanity chose on their own terms what was right and wrong. And we do see the result of that in our day-to-day -day life. That including climate change, including pandemics, and including those things that don't appear to be man-made, they are the result of humanity's fall. It's what the Bible teaches. And everything is because we, the crown of God's creation, the most important part, went away and everything was disintegrating into this. And Christ has come to bring peace, to reconcile. So in Jesus, the Bible says, God is reconciling the whole world. And so what that means is that there's peace for us inside, but once the peace of Christ happens within us, it then impacts the wider world. We will become peacemakers, peace brokers. That's what Jesus is saying, blessed are you when you are a peacemaker. Now, for some people, that is quite a difficult message. Some people really want to say, actually, I'm not in war. I really want to do things on my own. And I, I want to live independently from God. And actually, that is really where the problem is. Because we need God. We need Him so desperately to fix things, not just in the world, but to fix our lives. And for some people, who probably come to church regularly, they think, well, actually, I do all these things, so God now needs to bless me. And that equally is not right. Because what it does not do, it doesn't trust in God. It just says, well, actually, this is what I do. So it makes us to be a savior, so to say. It makes us to do all, well, like, when I do it, then God has to do that. So it, it becomes our own focus also. So both have a self-centered focus that we want to do either our own thing, or we want to do God things for us in the way we want it. And peace on earth is restoring this. It's saying, I will make peace because I will do the things for you. And 
that means that the message for today is good news because it's purely grace. It's by grace that you and I will be saved. And that is because of Bethlehem. It's because of what the angel here is saying. It's saying, I bring you good news. Because today, a Savior is born. And my call to all of you is, let him be born in your heart today. And if you've done that before, do it again. Start fresh again. And say, Lord Jesus, I need you with every aspect of my life. I need peace with him. I need the fear to go away. Because the angel says, fear not, behold, I bring you good news. Peace on earth for you and me, for everyone. Amen. As I said, you're going to listen to the panel, then immediately after that panel, there's an opportunity to donate, so that will be on the screen. Um, and we would recommend and ask you to, if you can, to, on, uh, to donate online rather than in cash. So we don't need to touch anything. Uh, the, the details will be on the screen as well. And you have, if you have a mobile phone, you can just log in or you can text. And that's the, the most easiest way to kind of give. So we will have a carol, then an opportunity to donate, and a carol again. And I will say a few more things. Thank you.
Oh yeah, I'm sorry, opportunity to donate, but I also want to say a thank you to many of you who have been donating to a project that was in the making a while ago. We're going to update our AV system, and uh, that's partly to stream better online, but also to get the system updated here, and you might have noticed some crackling and some other uh, technical issues to get this done. But I want to say thank you so much, because we need to fundraise £20,000, and we've got the £20,000 because of you, generously donating, and of other organisations. So we can talk, actually, that's a lot, so we can do <laughs> uh, We also have been sending thank you letters out to, especially to those who specifically gave to this project. And if you have not been able to give, but we pray for this, thank you for all your prayers. We're going to have our last carol, and after the last carol, Kirsten will say thank you and a final blessing. Um, yeah. In a cold stone church under moon and stars, people stand as the orient starts, and the candles flicker into the dark this Christmas time. There's a child awake in her bed upstairs.
2,000 years of those who've gone before us. And we are connected with our brothers and sisters across the whole world who are beholding the good news today. And even better than that, we are connected with God the Father who sent the Son to be with us in spirit. So go in peace. The wisdom of the wonderful counsellor guide us. The strength of the mighty God defend us. The love of the everlasting Father enfold us. The peace of the Prince of Peace be upon us. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen.